Yes, you are now. Light. Okay. Put this on the front facing camera. One second. Page one of two. I can't control Camaro's Apollo. Button. All right. There it is. All right, guys. Hello again. And welcome to the second in my Periscope, um, I guess you'd call them sessions. Uh, answering your questions about blindness and visual impairment from a blind person's perspective. I am your token blind person. <laughs> I mean, I may be saying that somewhat in jest, but it is true. I am uh, blind slash visually impaired. I, As I said in my previous <clears throat> Periscope uh, session, I do have some vision, uh, but it is very limited. Uh, by the way, with that in mind, if the lighting is bad over here, if you're seeing kind of crappy lighting or if I'm too close to the camera or whatever, please let me know because I am not always able to tell <laughs> those facts, you know. Uh, so just let me know that. Um, so yeah, I as I say, I take any questions you have about blindness or vision impairment. For those of you who already know me to some extent, uh, you know, you can ask me how blindness particularly affects me. Uh, this is mainly a, a series of uh, periscopes uh, dedicated to educating the sighted public about blindness issues, uh, both physical barriers and social issues and, and other sort of related or peripheral blindness uh, and sometimes general disability matters. <clears throat> so if you have questions, put them down in the comments. Um, as I said before um, in the last session, um, I don't have enough vision to read the comments, however, I do use a speech software on my phone, so I, when I see that a comment has come in, and I do have enough vision to see that, when I see that a comment has come in, I will put my, my finger on the part of the screen where the comment has come in, and my speech software will read what's under my finger. So I will be able to read your comments there. If you don't hear, if you put in a comment and you don't hear it read, chances are I may have missed it, so please uh, submit uh, your comment again, uh, if you wouldn't mind. Um, as I said in my last Periscope session uh, on this topic, um, my field of vision is very narrow, so say if I'm looking at the center of my Periscope screen to make sure that I'm looking good or whatever, um, I may not always see the comments coming in at the lower left, so I have to look down there on occasion. So if you see my eyes doing something like this, that's why. Looking down into the to my left, I'm, trying, I'm making sure I'm not missing any comments slash questions. So again, any questions you have, topics are, there, there, there are no limits to the topics as long as they're blindness related. Um, and um, in the meantime, um, I am going to, um, I think I'm seeing some hearts maybe? It's kind of hard to tell. Anyway, comment me if you're giving me hearts because I can't always see them. Uh, but yeah, if you have questions, just throw them my way. In the meantime, I'm going to just talk about some uh, blindness issues that kind of come to my mind. I may plan this more formally in the future, what topics I'm going to discuss, depending on if I keep this up, if there's uh, enough interest in it. Which, really, last week, as far as I could tell, I didn't receive any questions. Um, now, I don't know, maybe there's I'm doing something wrong uh, in this... Uh, Periscope thing. I don't know. I'm pretty new to it. And uh, VoiceOver sometimes does some quirky things with, with apps. VoiceOver is my speech program, and sometimes it'll kind of mess with the appearance of apps, even the visual appearance when I'm using it. So if you're commenting and I'm not getting them or not seeing them, uh, go ahead and tweet me about it. Uh, same username as I am here. And we will try to work something out. Um, by the way, I do archive these um, Periscope sessions uh, on YouTube. So if you want to see past ones, uh, go ahead and go to my YouTube channel, which again is the same uh, username as it is here and on Twitter. I'm nothing if not consistent. Uh, yeah, Josh. Uh, yes, I heard your name there. Yeah, it, it does. You probably heard it read as well. It does tell me the names. Uh, although if someone has a username that's kind of like all one string of characters, two words but all one string of characters, right? It'll sometimes screw up the pronunciation, but if you have like a good old fashioned name like yours, it'll read it correctly. So usually when I answer questions, um, I will um, just 
replay the question, as it were. I won't use your name because I don't want to screw up your the pronunciation of it if my voice synthesizer doesn't read it correctly. Um, so anyway, and also, um, I will be repeating questions, even though folks who are following this can see them at the lower left. Uh, number one, there are blind, other blind folks that may be watching this, but also um, on YouTube, when I archive these, from what I can tell, the, the chat window does not appear, nor do the, <clears throat> excuse me, nor do the number of participants or anything like that. So um, I'm not insulting your intelligence, I'm just repeating mainly for other blind people and for the YouTube audience. Okay. So, um, I can't remember if I even repeated your question, Josh. I, he was, you, Josh, just, were, oh, you were just asking, if I can talk tonight, um, whether par whether my voice software reads the names. And yes, it uh, it does. Anyway, again, not sure how well you can hear when questions come in uh, on your end when, when voiceover reads them. Um, so anyway, I was going on about something else before I got in onto the YouTube tangent. Uh, I admit I'm really bad at that. When I'm in, in the classroom... Uh, I tend to have to watch myself on tangents because I tend to go off on them very easily. Um, hopefully I'll come back to it. But again, once again, uh, if you have any questions on blindness, shoot them my way in the comments. Um, heart this, share this, comment on this. Let's get this out there. Let's get it promoted. This isn't um, some hacky self-promotion thing. This is an important uh, thing to get people at, you know, cited public educated about blindness issues. It's huge. We're a minority community. We are largely misunderstood. And so it'd be great to get that out there. So heart, share, recommend to your friends, tweet about it, Facebook about it, promote it, heck out of it. I know I am. <laughs> uh, last week, I didn't get many questions. I will admit, of course, again, this is new. Um, so, uh, you know, I um, realize that and I realize it's in the beginning stages but I am trying to gauge the interest in this. So I'm over the next several sessions, I'm going to try to gauge the interest and I hope we get more people around here um, and more questions because that will determine uh, A, if I continue doing it and B, if I continue putting it up on YouTube, C, you know, how much effort I put into it basically, right? So if you want to see it continue. Yes, uh, I just saw yours. I just saw yours pop up there, and that's why I put my finger on the screen, and it had it read to me what was what was there. Um, yeah, it appears they are. Um, now, as I said earlier, I don't know if you were on when I first mentioned it, so I'll say it again. My field of vision is really narrow, and so when I'm looking at the center of the screen, um, I won't. I may not always see what's popping up in the lower left where the comments are. So if you don't hear your comment, or comment or question read. Uh, please feel free to put it up there again, um, and hopefully I will see it that next time, and I will read it, hear it, <laughs> and I will respond to it. Um, so, yeah, I, I am, I, when I look down there, I will see comments come up. Um, by the way, again, if there are any problems with lighting or being too close to the screen or whatever, let me know, because I, I don't always notice that. Um, all right, um, now, I, and again, any questions, just throw them out there. Even if I'm talking about something else, just throw out a question, and I will definitely get to it. But since I'm not getting any questions right now that I can see, um, I'm going to start out with a topic. And if, even if you have questions on the topics that I'm going to discuss, free, feel free to jump in and throw a question there. Throw a question out on that topic, or throw a question out on any topic, even if I'm on a different topic, right? And like I said, nothing's off limits. Any questions are, are good. Okay, so... Today I planned to discuss, as a matter of fact, planning is, is maybe 10 minutes ago I thought of this. <laughs> I plan to discuss blind employment, or the lack thereof. Employment or unemployment of blind people. Um, now, the statistics on general disability unemployment uh, are... are um, I don't know the exact numbers off the top of my head, but I do know that they are extraordinarily high compared to the able-bodied population. And um, in terms of blindness unemployment, I've, the general figure that I have heard through various organizations of blind people and for blind people and through other sources uh, has been about um, 75%. Yes, you heard me right. 75%. And I've heard as high as 77%. Now, you would think with the ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act, and with other laws that involve non-discrimination, 
against people with disabilities, you'd think that that would be a lot lower. Well, not quite. Now, let me first say, though, the, the number of, uh, as far as the number of disabled people and certainly blind people who are employed, as I understand it, the majority of these people who are employed are employed in what I might call specialized situations, like specialized workshops specifically designed for people with disabilities or for blind people, you know, just to get them working, right? Just to get us working. Uh, and so they're not, the majority of us are not out there in the mainstream employed in regular work doing something to benefit you know, the broader community. Many of us are in, in these specialized workshops. I hate to say it, I'm not downing these places because sometimes this is the only work that a blind person can get, which I'll go into here in a minute, the reasons for that. But um, uh, a lot of times these workshops are very small and they don't have the kind of impact on the world that a blind person might want to have through their field of employment. They're, they're not, you know, as significant in many cases as being, as being employed in the mainstream. Um, you know, and, and there's another situation too, certainly Goodwill, the National Federation of the Blind, which is an organization, the largest, I believe, organization of blind people in this country, has in fact protested outside of Goodwill uh, stores and, and uh, uh, places of employment uh, because they don't pay their workers even minimum wage. I guess there's some loophole in the law that allows employers not to pay, at least in specialized workshops, not to pay people with disabilities uh, even at the minimum wage. So we've protested that little loophole and we've protested uh, uh, Goodwill specifically. So just so you know, that's, um, that's what your dollars are or are not doing. Now, some of the statements I'm about to make and have probably already made are even controversial within the blindness community. Some people might say, oh, at least it's work, right? But, you know, for me, equality, you know, of blind people with the sight is a huge issue and I just wanted to bring that to mind. Um, so, right, as I said, the majority of blind people are involved either in, as I said, uh, specialized workshops, basically, I hate to say it, but pretty much warehoused, which again, I'll get into in a minute, or they are working in uh, blindness-specific fields, like they might work on developing adaptive technology, such as I'm using on my phone, uh, or they might uh, help instruct other blind people in Braille, for instance. Now, that's well and good. That's great to do something for the community. I applaud that for our community, but um, once again, many, there are many of us out there who really want to work in the mainstream. We want to impact not just a small portion of society, not just the blind community, but the world as a whole, you know, a larger segment of the general population in what we do, in what, we're, you know, what we consider sort of our vocation or calling or whatever you want to call it. Um, but the thing is, while there are laws on the books to prevent any kind of overt discriminatory activity, there are ways around those laws, frankly. People can skirt them all around and do, in fact. Um, a lot of times, you know, if they do not want to hire, say, a blind person, they will find some other reason not to give for not hiring them. Oh, it's not because they're blind, it's because they lacked this or that. And there have been proven cases where that, um, that excuse has been shown as invalid. Um, again, I don't have the, the numbers off the top of my head right here in front of me in any way, but um, I know that there are cases like that. And, and blind people and disabled people have fought against those discriminatory practices. Um, and by and large, uh, many of the reasons uh, for this discrimination, covert or overt, uh, again, most of it being covert, and it hard to prove whether, the, you know, a blind person was discriminated against. Um, most of those um, <clears throat> are, um, they stem from a belief by sighted employers that blind people are incapable uh, of, of doing what they claim they can do. Even in interviews, you know, you go for an interview, you say, I can do this and this and this, I might need this accommodation, but I will be able successfully to do A, B, and C. A lot of times employers just don't trust us for whatever reason. They don't trust that we know best what we can and can't do after all of our years of experience living as a blind person in many cases. Now, some people, of course, are newly blind, but uh, in most cases, many of us have lived this way for a long time and we're perfectly capable of knowing what we're capable of, <laughs> right? 
And so, um, you know, another reason might be that um, employers think, oh, we're, I'm going to have to provide this or that accommodation and I just can't, you know, spare that expense. Well, what I say to that is, number one, you may be getting a really good employee, even if they are blind, you know, they, they may be very capable, they may add a lot to your company. So that shouldn't be perhaps as much of an issue as it is. Number two, many of us already provide our own accommodations. So we already say have computers we, with speech on them or magnification. We already have phones with speech on them. We already know braille. We already have a white cane or a guide dog. A lot of us come in and bring our own accommodations. So in most cases, the accommodations they need to provide are not going to be that significant. Um, so, um, yeah, like I said, a lot of misconceptions out there, uh, both about uh, physical barriers and, and limitations, but also about blind people uh, in terms of, you know, socially. Um, so, yeah, bl there, there's your kind of rundown of uh, blindness, uh, uh, unemployment, if you will. Um, now, I'm, I want to tell you a specific story uh, regarding blindness unemployment. There is a certain, um, currently she is an, a, a blind owner of a restaurant in Chicago. As far as I know, she's the only blind owner of a restaurant in the world, believe it or not. And uh, she uh, was trained, her name is uh, uh, Laura Martinez, as I recall. I think you probably just Google her, Google Laura Martinez and Blind Chef, and you'll probably be able to find more about her. But what I know of her, I will tell you here. Um, she was trained, educated, at the prestigious Cordon Bleu, you know, cooking school. Now, I'm not a professional chef, so, I mean, I don't know a whole lot about it, but as I understand, it's a very prestigious, uh, French school, uh, French uh, culinary school, <clears throat> excuse me. And, um, so after she, well, while she was being, uh, schooled there, if you will, um, someone noticed her at that school and decided to take her on as a mentee, you know, became her mentor. <clears throat> and, um, so, uh, after she, I guess, graduated from Cordon Bleu, uh, he decided to hire her on it at his restaurant. Well, you know, that was well and good. He kept her on, but eventually he passed away. As a matter of fact, maybe a couple years ago, perhaps No, when he passed away. Now, I don't know how this happened, but as I understand it, when he passed away, she was basically out of a job. So she went looking for other jobs, you know, trained at a prestigious institution, all that. Uh, loved to cook, showed that she had ability. Um, and she was looking for jobs and couldn't find any work. People, as I understand it, cited people, cited employers, would not give her a chance, despite her qualifications. Um, and so, now, while she had always wanted to eventually open up her own restaurant, <clears throat> yes, blind people are that ambitious, or we can be, um, she didn't think she was going to have to do that, uh, or she was going to do that very soon after she graduated from uh, Cordon Bleu. And she wanted to start out by working in other restaurants, you know, working her way up. But because no one would apparently give her a chance, no sighted employer give her a chance, um, she basically was almost forced into opening her own restaurant early. Um, and again, I say forced, of course, with some qualifications because that's what she wanted to do eventually anyway. But, you know, she wanted to determine more of her own path and, and much of her own path was determined for her, is my point, uh, due to um, probably a lot of covert discrimination on the part of cited employers. Um, now, um, by the way, for folks who are curious, as I say, her restaurant is in Chicago. Uh, it is Mex a combination of Mexican and French sort of, I guess, fusion cuisine. And, uh, you know, in tribute to her Mexican heritage and her French training. And it is, um, I can't read the exact address off the top of my head, but anyway, it's called La Diosa. L-A space D-I-O-S-A, La Diosa. And uh, so you can probably just Google that and go there. I recommend you go there. Go there, check it out, patronize her, tell her I sent you, tell her Misty sent you, tell her about my podcast, you know, for goodness sake, <laughs> or and my podcast and my, um, my, uh, uh, Periscope sessions, right? Um, okay, so before I lose my train of thought, um, for those of you who read my profile, I myself am a trained, uh, Latinist, particularly I am a licensed Latin teacher. Now, I myself have been looking for a job for a bit of time. 
And I think I've encountered similar issues with uh, with covert discrimination. Again, I can't prove it. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I've had, I think, some uh, extent of, 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 uh, of that as well. And again, I don't want to personally go into all the gory details of that. But uh, anyway, it happens to a lot of us. Um, right. Okay. So, um, any questions about blindness, employment, or unemployment? Any questions about anything else related to blindness or vision impairment? About how it affects me personally? As I said before, not every person who identifies as blind is totally blind. I do have some vision, as you can probably tell by the glasses, and by the fact that I'm, you know, able to see some things that I'm doing in Periscope. Um, so yeah, any questions about blindness, vision impairment? I have a good read on the community, the blind community. I'm very well connected to the blind community through the internet, particularly through uh, blindness organizations and, uh, you know, other media, blindness-related media and disability media as well. Um, but, uh, so yeah, but, you know, pretty well, I'm just your average, uh, Jane Blink, if you will, you know, average blind person, just, uh, doing my part to educate folks about blindness issues. I'm not, you know, a president of any of those organizations or anything like that, but, um, you know, I'm just trying to do my thing to educate, uh, the general public about, about blindness issues. Mm, excuse me. Um, so yeah, any questions, throw them out. Again, if I've missed them at the lower right of my screen... Uh, throw them out there again. I may have just missed them. If you didn't, if you haven't heard your um, your question read uh, aloud on uh, with my speech software, I probably missed it. So uh, let's go ahead and throw it out there. And as I said last last week when I started this, um, this is just basically a sort of an open line format. If you guys don't ask questions, I will just kind of yammer on about a particular blindness issue, as I just did. <clears throat> now. I would take more breaks, ask for questions, all that in between time for folks that maybe just joined. But just personally, I am horrible, as I said, about going off on tangents and then losing my way. So I try to get through one topic entirely before I go on and ask for questions. But as I said before, if, if you have questions in the middle of me speaking, throw them out there. Even if I'm still talking, throw them out there and I'll definitely get to them. Whether it be on the subject that I'm addressing or on some other subject, just uh, throw them out there. Um... Right. So, uh, speaking of, um, I was talking about YouTube earlier, um, and I think I mentioned my, uh, I believe I alluded to a podcast that I do earlier. Now, I do, yes, I do have a podcast, <clears throat> like you should call it a, a vodcast, a video podcast, on YouTube um, called Through My Eyes. Same spelling, you know, s normal spacing, all that. Through My Eyes. And if you go to my YouTube channel, as I said before, it is the same username as I have here. Go to my channel, go to Playlist, and click on the playlist list through my eyes, you will be able to see that. It's a little more formal than this, not too much more formal. But I do have a question time on there as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and uh, I do a lot more showing than telling. I do a lot more demonstrations and more visually stimulating things, you know, if you will. Um, so go there, check that out, watch those. Um, I don't do them regularly. Matter of fact, I think I do this more regularly already than I ever have done podcast. Uh, but anyway, check those out. That's actually how I started doing this kind of thing was uh, through those podcasts a number of years ago. Um, I'm also, as I said earlier, posting these on uh, YouTube. Right now, the playlist is called simply called My Periscopes, so you can find the first one on there, and I'll be uploading this one here later. Um, and uh, hopefully if this isn't too big for my camera roll, <laughs> put it that way. Um, and... Uh, well, I don't know, guys, a little bit of a tangential question, not blindness related to you guys, but a uh, question for you guys. When you, when your Periscope uploads to Periscope and you can see it, you know, for 24 hours and you've broadcasted it, uh, can you go to some kind of setting to where you can um, upload it to your camera roll uh, after it's t done uploading to, to uh, Periscope so you can, like, save it later even if you're done uploading it to Periscope, if that makes sense? Uh Anyone have any insight on that? Again, I'm not sure about my participant count right now. I hope I still maintain people on here. Hope it hasn't gotten too boring for folks. Um, but yeah, any uh, if you have any answers to that particular issue, let me know. Um, right. So, uh, yeah, the playlist. Like I said, now it's called My Periscopes. Um, but I'm planning on changing, changing the name to Questions About Blindness, 
question mark in parentheses, the periscope sessions, the periscope sessions, <laughs> right? Uh, but, you know, just if it's too much to remember, just, just look on my playlist and look for questions about blindness, and that should be, that should be it. Um, I mentioned last week, again, if you have any questions, feel free to throw them out there on the comments section. Heart this, share this, promote it as I am. We need to get more people. Um, thank you <laughs> in advance. Uh, last week I mentioned that um, I do read print, but very large print, about four or five times magnification. And I, I actually would like to show you what that looks like. Um, so I'm going to bring up something on my computer and show you what the text that I like to read, or that, that's easier for me to read, rather, looks like. So I'm going to flip you back to the back-facing camera. You'll see a black screen for a moment, and you'll probably hear me typing, and I'm going to go ahead and bring that up. There needs to be a hold button on this, so <laughs> you're not periscoping constantly when you're trying to make a transition. Anyway, that's just my tangential opinion about periscope. Um, but anyway, switching to the black, the, the black, it will be black in a minute, to the back camera. And once I get my computer set up to where you can see it, I will show you what size of print I use. A little bit of demonstration, a little break from me just talking, right? Something more stimulating visually. Because I know sighted people like to have visual stimulation, not just me sitting here talking. As I said, I do a lot more of that on my more formal Through My Eyes podcast, so check that out. Anyway, um, right, I'm going to switch over and I'm going to get my computer ready. So here we go. All right, I'll I'll continue to talk while I'm doing this so it's not totally... Nothing, hearing nothing, seeing nothing. Um, the program that reads my iPhone, reads the screen on my iPhone when I put my finger over something, is called VoiceOver. And uh, it is um, um, again, basically reads my screen. It's built into the iPhone. Excuse me. Um, and so anytime I put my finger over something, uh, the VoiceOver program will read that to me. So I can actually navigate my iPhone without vision. All right, let me see what I want to do here. You probably can hear I've got speech um, on my um, computer as well, and magnification. I mentioned that last week. So one second, I'll show you the magnification in a minute. I'll get my camera back up here shortly. So let me go and search for something to show you. So I'm going to go to my Latin dictionary here, maybe. Yeah, I'm a liberal arts person, so I'm not exactly the most technical person. There we go, Latin Dictionary. Now let's bring up a little entry just so you guys can see something. As you see in my profile, and as I mentioned earlier, I'm a Latinist by training, so I thought I'd bring that up. Let me go to Dictionary, and I'll bring up an entry. I will show you the word for blind since we're on the subject. And by the way, I do use touch typing. Um, by the way, I'm not looking at my phone right now, so I'm not going to see comments. I'll let you know when I'm looking at it again. I do touch typing, and so I'm actually pretty quick at it. Um, what is this doing? Is this like down today? Hold on one sec. Oh, there it is. reason it's not wanting just when you want it to come up it's not coming up well let me just do this let me just type in the word maybe oh no wonder <laughs> Latinist problems, classicist problems. My keyboard was set on ancient Greek. And I wasn't looking while I was typing, and so I didn't just get to notice that until just now. Lovely. All right, let me go back to English. For some reason, it wants to randomly switch. Other classes have the same issue. When you have you know, a dual keyboard set up down there in your taskbar. For those of you who do that sort of thing, you know what I'm talking about. All right. All right, I'm going to switch, take this and cover off my camera, and let's see here. Okay, so there, right there you are. So, um, 
you've got Kaikus, which means blind, Kaikus, Kaika, Kaikum are the three forms that we use. And I think that's hard for me to see through the camera. Okay, ACT, and then you have uh, the definition after that. Okay, oh, and there's my Twitter going off too. So eh, there's the definition. This is about the size of print I like. And you notice that I am using white text and a black background. Okay. Um, that is preferable for me because my vision is so dim. It actually, it's easier for me to see white text on a black background. If I have black text on white, the white often interferes with me being able to read the black text. It kind of creates kind of a glare, right? And so um, that's why I use this particular form of print. All right, I'm going to put this back, this camera cover back over, and I'm, once I get back out where I need to be, where I can see what I'm doing, I'm going to flip back around. So there you are. And I'm going to stick this camera cover back on. Go back out to where I was. <clears throat> and, all right. I can't control the all right. Now, so I think I'm going to jump on out of here. Again, if I missed your questions, if you did put them out there, I do apologize. Uh, I hope this was informative for people both here and on YouTube. As I say, you know, um, when I'm live sh on Periscope, share this, uh, heart it. Um, when I'm not on Periscope, recommend it to friends, tweet about it, Facebook about it, share it, promote it. If you believe in this cause, let's, uh, let's all get it out there, whether you're blind or sighted. Um, so, uh, I'm going to, as I say, try to get this up on, on YouTube as soon as I can. And, um, hopefully I'm, I, I'm, I'm planning on being back next week. Um, again, I'm going to continue to judge the interest. I'll probably do this several more times. And if there's really not a lot of interest, I might, uh, I might actually stop doing it. So, um, just go ahead and, uh, like I said, that should be the motivation for you guys to share this and to tweet about it and to heart it. Because uh, I don't want to be talking to thin air each time, and or, or basically thin air, right? And everyone's important, of course, but we want to get a lot of people involved in this. Um, and so, uh, you know, any blindness organizations who may be listening to this, watching this, um, I, I would ask that you, through whatever means, let your people know about this podcast or podcast, well, session, Periscope session, and about my podcast as well. That would be great um, on YouTube. So. I'm going to jump on off of here. Uh, it was lovely chatting with folks. Um, again, if you didn't get your question here, if I missed it here as well, um, you can ask it on my YouTube channel, and I will try to get to it the next time. I always check the comments on there as well, on these periscopes that I archive there. So, um, right. Uh, I will talk with you all later. Have a, have a nice whatever time of day it is, rest of the day, where you are. Bye, guys. Like, stop broadcast. Button.